Hi, engineers. Welcome to our wave optics class. So this is the first lecture we are going to cover most of the basic things related to wave optics. And here we have three parts mainly, interference, diffraction and polarization. Today we are going to discuss about the focus on Huygens principle and superposition of the waves. And then we will see the introduction of interference and coherence. Before going to wave optics, we will see what is optics. So basically optics is a branch of physics which we study the nature of the light and phenomena exhibited by it. Optics further classified into two types. One is wave optics, another one is a ray optics. So in wave optics, we will discuss the optics by treating as a light as a wave. In a ray optics, we will treat light as a ray. So there is major four theories are there about the light. Started with the Newton's corpuscular theory, where he proposed light is a particle and he developed the theory based on it. After some time, Huygens introduced the concept of wave and he told that light is a wave. Then after some time, Maxwell electromagnetic theory come into picture and where it tells about light is an electromagnetic wave. Further in 1900s, when Planck introduced quantum theory, then light is treated as a photon and further de Broglie showed that all matters in the nature has a dual nature. So now what we can treat is light is a photon and it has a dual nature. So wave is a disturbance in a medium that carries energy without movement of the particle. So whenever we are discussing about the wave, we require some characteristics or properties of the waves in terms of which we uh, express the nature of the wave. That is amplitude, time period, frequency, wave, phase, intensity. Next one is particle. A particle is a point in space which has mass occupy the space or region. These characteristics, one is mass, velocity, momentum, and energy. Now we will see the different characteristics of the waves. So when come to the waves, we have amplitude. If we take the, this wave, transverse wave, and amplitude is nothing but from mean position to the maximum distance, one side it can move. That is what we call amplitude. Then phase, phase of the wave describes the state of the motion as the wave sweeps through an element at a particular position. So wavelength is nothing but the distance between two consecutive thrusts or thrusts. So this may be the lambda. Between these two, this may be the lambda we will use. Then time period of a wave. In order to complete one oscillation, how much time it will take, that's what we know, time period of wave. Then frequency of the wave. Frequency of the wave is measured in H and is denoted by nu number of oscillations per unit time. The path difference and phase difference. So when come to the path difference, refers to the difference in the length of the path taken by the two waves. Now, phase difference. So phase difference reference, it's a difference in their position within their respective cycle by using this formula. Phase difference is equal to two pi into path difference by wavelength. We have different type of the wave fronts. So generally the light coming from the sun can be treated as a plane wave. And even in the laboratories, if we are using the normal light sources, by using the lens, we can convert these spherical wave front and cylindrical wave fronts into plane wave. But when come to the definitions, you can see here, then Huygens principle, every point on the wave front is in itself the source of spherical wave legs which spread out in forward direction at the speed of the light. The sum of the sp these spherical wavefronts form the wavefront. Light is traveling in the directions by forming wavelets whenever it is moving. And here also it will form the wavelet and the surface of the wavelet. Secondary wavelet's amplitude is maximum in forward direction and zero in backward direction. Then surface touching the secondary wavelet tangentially in the forward direction give the direction of secondary wave. Then what is this advantages we will get with it? So Huygens concept to prove reflection and refraction of the light. Then the diffraction of the light, 
interference are proved by Huygens. So even though it is able to explain so many phenomena, but it fails to how light will be emitted, absorbed, or polarization, then it is not able to explain photoelectric effect. Observed by H long back, what it says is, so emission of the electrons from a metal surface when light is irradiated, that's what we call photoelectric effect. Albert Einstein, based on a quantum theory, able to explain that one and provided photoelectric equation. Next one is, what are the applications? These, these are the applications. So we can explain a different phenomena. So you can go through them. Then we will come to the superposition of the waves. So when two or more waves with the same frequency traveling in opposite direction, then they will overlap. The resultant displacement is some of the displacement of each wave. So if two waves are there, if they are in phase, so when we see the first picture, it's a maximum, maximum is getting superimposed, then we will say it's a in phase. So whenever they are superimposed, two waves, the resultant amplitude will be algebraic sum, or we can more broad sense, we can treat it as a vector sum. It will form maximum amplitude, that's what we call constructive phenomena, whereas if both are in out of phase, frequency and amplitude, the resultant will be zero. Both will can cancel each other. This is the principle of superposition of the wave. So what is this coherence? Coherence is very simple. Whenever we say a two waves are coherent, they should have same wavelength, same amplitude and constant phase difference. So whenever we observe these two green waves, these two waves having same wavelength, same amplitude, but phase difference is 90. One is moving in positive direction, another is moving in negative direction, even though they are in out of phase. Then we will say that these two waves are in power. Then when come to the blue colored waves, here this wave have not same wavelength. They are totally different. There is no particular one. This is a sinusoidal wave, sine nature. This one, this is a cos theta graph. But this is a something else. So these are not in power. Next one, what is the interference of light? So the modification of the intensity of the light due to superposition of two or more wave breaks is called interference. So interference means the pattern we can see at the down. All type of the waves can give interference? No. So in order to get the interference, there is uh, some conditions we have. So the first condition is two light sources must emit continuous waves and have same wavelength, amplitude and frequency. This is simply what we can say it's a coherent. It should be coherent. It should be monochromatic. Monochromatic means single color. And next one is the separation between the source and the screen. Source means from where light is emitting and a screen is from where we are observing. The separation between these two should be large and the separation between the two light sources will be small. Please, and interference we told it will take two types. One is constructive interference where we get maximum intensity and destructive interference where we will get minimum intensity. So for this, where we will get constructive interference and where we will get destructive interference, it is decided by the path difference. From path difference, we can get the phase difference. If the path difference is n lambda or integral multiple of lambda or even multiple of n by 2, then we will get the constructive interference. Destructive interference we will get whenever the path difference is 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2. Right. Here, we can see some examples of interference. General life we will observe. This is for today's class. And in the next class, analyze the thin film and a Newton rings experiment based on the interference. Thank you. Have a great day.